centrifugal pump and its components. Introduction A centrifugal pump means a hydraulic machine that converts mechanical energy into hydraulic energy. A centrifugal pump is a rotary machine that converts mechanical energy or kinetic energy into pressure energy or pressure head by means of centrifugal force, is known as a centrifugal pump. The centrifugal pump is working based on the centrifugal force and the name follows the same. Fluid enters into the pumps, gets the energy from the centrifugal force of the impeller, and raised its velocity and pressure. Due to this pressure, the liquid is transferred from one place to another. Operating principle Liquid enters the suction nozzle and later into the eye of the impeller due to the rotation of the pump impeller. Low pressure region pulls the liquid towards the eye of the impeller. The rotation of the impeller radially pushes the liquid rightward arrow centrifugal acceleration. The centrifugal force and curved nature of the blade pushes the liquid in the tangential and radial direction. A pump is required to transfer liquid from an area or a place to another place. The main acting force is centrifugal force. Kinetic energy changed into pressure energy or pressure head. Components of centrifugal pump The main parts of the centrifugal pump are 1. Impeller 2. Casing 3. Backplate 4. Suction and discharge nozzles 5. Suction pipe 6. A foot valve 7. Strainer 8. Suction nozzle or suction flange 9. Pump shaft slash connections 10. Coupling 11. Bearing 12. Delivery or discharge pipe 13. Discharge valve 14. Discharge nozzle or discharge flange 15. Mechanical seal 16. Shroud and legs 17. Adapter Components of centrifugal pump One, impeller. The impeller is the main part of the pump and it is connected to a motor drive shaft that drives the pump. The impeller rotates based on the rotation of the motor. The impeller is fixed onto the pump shaft which is housed in a pump casing and back plate. The impeller transfers energy from the motor to the fluid which is to be pumped. Due to the rotation of the impeller, fluid get accelerations and increase velocity as well as kinematic energy. Impellers have a lot of veins. These veins help the liquid to flow from the center to the outer edge of the impeller. Types of impeller A. Open impellers Open impeller means veins are open on both sides. Since it is open, veins don't have any support from any side. This kind of impeller handles less amount of water and the pumps are smaller and efficiency is less. This impeller can handle suspended solids. B. Semi-open impellers In this impeller, veins are semi-open, which means only one side is open. Here veins are attached or supported with a single plate. Since the liquid is interacting with the rest of the liquid inside the pumps, these are less efficient. However, it is better than an open impeller and can handle suspended solids and viscous fluids. C. Closed impellers. Here, no side of the impeller is open, which means both sides are closed. It is looking like a sandwiched panel. The liquid travels through the veins or channels among the impeller and plates. This is the most efficient impellers. These kinds of impellers are mainly used for clear liquids. 2. Casing Centrifugal pump casing is simply like an airtight passage. This is housed the pump impeller and help to convert the kinetic energy of the impeller into the pressure head. There are three different kinds of centrifugal pump casings. Volute casing. 
Vortex Casing Casing with Guide Blade A. Volute Casing The volute casing is a spiral passage area between the impeller and casing to increase the area gradually towards the delivery pipe. We know, if the area is increased, then the flow will decrease naturally. Flow decrease means, velocity, as well as kinetic energy, K.E, will decrease. This reduced velocity or K.E converts into pressure energy and increases the pressure energy or pressure head in the casing. The volute casing will increase the efficiency. Loss is more because of eddy formation. The volute casing is two types based on design. Single volute casing, only one volute. Double volute casing, two volutes. B. Vortex casing. Vortex casing means a round or circular chamber between the impeller and casing. Due to the circular chamber, the eddy loss, as well as energy loss, is very less. Vortex casing is more efficient than the volute casing. C. Casing with guide blades. As the name implies, in this kind of casing, the impeller is surrounded by a number of guide blades. These blades act as diffusers. The diffuser means a gradual increase in flow area, which reduces velocity or K.E and increases pressure energy. 3. Backplate The backplate is of pressed steel or any rigid material, based on application. This backplate and pump casing together form an actual pump liquid chamber where the fluid is undergoing the process. 4. Suction and Discharge Nozzle Suction nozzle is provided for fluid intake. The axis of the suction nozzle corresponds to the impeller's rotational axis. Discharge nozzle is provided for fluid outlet. The discharge nozzle is at the normal to the axis of the impeller. 5. Suction pipe The suction pipe means the pipe at the suction side. It connects between the pump enclosed area and the water sump. One end of this pipe is connected to the center of the impeller or the inlet of the pump which is known as the eye and another end dips into the water which is to be lifted. In the case of double end suction, the pump consists of two suction pipe which is connected to the eye from both sides. 6. Foot valve A foot valve normally fitted with a strainer at the lower end of the suction pipe. This valve acts as a check valve which allows liquid only in one way that is the upward direction. 7. Strainer The strainer filtrate unwanted particle from the water and prevent the centrifugal pump from blockages. 8. Pump shaft It is a shaft that connects the motor and impeller. Most pumps have stub shafts. Stab shaft means it is fixed to the motor shafts with the help of couplings. Simple design. Less vibration and noise. 9. Coupling. The coupling is an important part to connect the pump with the motor if it is not directly driven. It transfers power from driver to driven machine. It helps to easy servicing. If the coupling is flexible, it helps to protect the bearing. It can adjust a small degree of misalignment. 10. Bearings. The pump consists of rotating and stationary parts. Bearings are used to make a correct alignment between these two. Bearings support all the loads created by the rotating parts. It helps to keep the shaft deflections within acceptable limits. It helps to transmit the load to the pump foundation. 11. Delivery pipe and valves. The delivery pipe helps the pump to deliver liquid from the pump outlet to the required level. It makes the connection between the pump outlet to the deliver point. A valve is provided near the outlet of the pump on the delivery pipe to control the controls the flow from the pump. The non-return valve is the type as the delivery valve. 12. Mechanical seal. The pump shaft or motor shaft is connected to the impeller. 
the impeller is kept inside the casing. Hence, it is mandatory, to seal the shaft entry portion into the pump casing. This sealing is known as a mechanical seal. It helps to prevent any kind of leakage. 13. Shroud and Legs Many pumps are fitted with shrouds, adjustable legs. The shroud helps to minimize the noise level and both these things help to protect the motor against damage. Like and subscribe. Thanks for watching.